Since we have covered all the important and necessary theories in the last tutorial, so now we are free to do some practical examples. What's up internet, I am Manish from rebellionrider.com and today in this tutorial we will learn how to create a VRA inside a PL SQL block or to say as a member of PL SQL block. To make the understanding of the concept easy, we will try to keep the example as simple as possible. So if you are new to programming, don't worry, I got you. Let's cut to the cheese and start the tutorial. Here after setting the server output on. I started an anonymous PL SQL block in which I first defined or say created a VRA with the name in block underscore VRY which can hold five elements of number data type. This is the first step where we define the VRA in block underscore VRY. Next we have to initialize it. To initialize the VRA we will first define a collection variable and then use that variable for initializing. The defining of a collection variable and using it for initializing the VRA will be done in a single step. This contraption can collectively be referred to as defining and initializing the VRA. Also let me tell you some books refer collection variable as collection object. So please don't get confused as both are the same. So let's initialize our VRA. In the above statement we declare the collection variable VRY underscore OBG and use that to initialize the VRA in block underscore VRY. Note here. I have not yet written anything inside the parenthesis. Just move along the tutorial. I'll tell you why I mentioned it here. But for now these two statements complete our declaration section. Next we will start the execution section of this PL SQL block and write some executable statements. Great, here we have a very simple execution section. Let me tell you what exactly is happening here. In this execution section, we have a for loop. I'll come to this loop statement later. First, let's see what's inside it. Inside this for loop, we have two statements. In the first statement, we are assigning values which are multiples of 10 into each cell of our VRA using collection variable. And the second statement which is obviously an output statement is displaying the values stored into the VRA to the user. Now let's come back to the loop statement. But before that let me tell you I have done a detailed tutorial explaining the concept of PL SQL for loop. Go ahead and watch that to understand the working of this loop. Link is in the description. Meanwhile, let's take a look at this loop statement. According to it, our for loop will iterate from 1 to 5. Now you must be thinking why only up to 5? Because we have only 5 elements in our VRA. No need to get confused. Let me explain it to you. In this loop statement, we used a method or a function called limit to set the upper limit. Limit is a collection method which returns the maximum number of elements which are allowed in the VRA. Here in our case it is 5 which in turn becomes the upper limit of this for loop. Hope you understand. Now let's try to execute this program. But this execution will return an error. I'll explain why but first let's execute. And here is the error subscript beyond count. We have created the VRA. We have initialized it. We have even stored values into it and that too without any syntax error. Then what is wrong here? Right. You have followed all the steps correctly and there is no syntax error either. In short there is nothing wrong with this program. 
but there is a catch that is though we have declared and initialized the vre but we haven't allocated the memory to it so in this case memory is not yet allocated to the vre in block underscore vry so how we can allocate a memory to the vre we can allocate memory either by supplying arguments to the vre while initializing it or by using extend collection method let's see the first way which is supplying arguments to the vre in this method you supply argument for each element of the vre inside the parenthesis while initializing it let's do it first close this output panel done see here I have supplied 5 null values as our VRE can hold maximum of 5 elements. In case your VRE is set for not accepting null values then you can replace these with some other values that match the data type with those of the VRE's elements. Such as in our case VRE can hold elements of number data type. Thus I can replace these nulls with any valid numbers. Let's execute and see what happens. Here is the result. To be very honest, this is not my personal favorite way of allocation. This way is good, but only when your VRA is small. Suppose if this VRA is very large, say up to 100 elements. So in that case, what are you going to do? Write null, null, null 100 times. When the VRA is large, this method makes the code horribly unreadable which in turn causes confusion. To avoid such confusions, we have another way of allocation which is clearer and simpler. This is by using a procedure which is called extend. Extend allocates the memory and appends an element to the VRE. If used without argument, it appends single null element. And if used with argument, then appends n number of elements to the collection where n is the integer you supplied as argument to the procedure extend. Let's do it. But first, let's close this output panel and delete all those nulls from here. We cannot allocate by both ways at once. Done. Now, if you decide to allocate memory using extend procedure with parameter, then you have to do it outside the loop. First, write the collection variable name followed by dot and then the procedure with parameters. Remember, the number you supply as the parameter must match with the total number of elements allowed in your VRA. In my case, it's 5. Execute. And here is the result. Now, if you decide to do it dynamically, meaning allocate memory when you insert the data, then you do it inside the loop without parameters. Let me show you how. But once again, first close this output window. And delete this extend procedure call from here. Great. You have to take care of two things here. First, do not supply any parameter with procedure extend. And second, call the procedure before data insertion into the collection. Otherwise, you will get an error. Let's execute. And here is the result once again. <sighs> That's quite a tutorial. Anyways, hope you enjoyed watching and learned something new. Please give this video a like. You can also help others in learning as well as help me and my channel in growing by sharing this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please, please, please subscribe. That's PL SQL Tutorial 55 on how to create VRAs inside a PL SQL blog. Thanks for watching. This is Manish from RebellionRider.com.